Welcome to another episode of I Know Jax, I'm Joe Talentino. Now in my show, I talk a lot about the importance of being local, and what I mean with that is simply supporting everything local, from local events to local businesses. I enjoy exploring local restaurants and trying different types of food, and I also enjoy exploring different cultures. Now I don't get to travel abroad as much as I'd like to, so one of the things I try to do is go to different restaurants to try new foreign foods. This past week, I, I went to Ibex, a really great Ethiopian restaurant here in town where you can try Ethiopian food and they have a special coffee ceremony that they do. And Ethiopian food is a great option if you're looking for gluten-free or vegan food. Now, another place that serves delicious and healthy food is Present Moment Cafe in St. Augustine. Just take a look. So Julie, tell me what's, uh, what's unique about your restaurant. Uh, it is the only restaurant in Northeast Florida that offers a full vegan menu, and we have a lot of organic options, gluten-free, raw, but we do um, serve up some cooked options as well. And we have the kind of food that you can't find anywhere else in this area, so it's very unusual, but very tasteful at the same time. I headed to the kitchen where Jonas was making zucchini pesto pasta. So I start with two tablespoons of the pesto sauce. So how do you make a pesto sauce for this type of dish? Well, uh, we use a lot of nuts. It's a nut-based sauce, so you know, you're placing the fats that you would normally get in cheese right. with uh, things like cashews, pine nuts, um, so that sort of thing, and then all the normal herbs that would go in it, and, um, as well as olive oil. Jonas adds a tablespoon each of red pepper, red onion, and sun-dried tomatoes. Then he adds the zucchini noodles to the bowl. You're gonna do something that's interesting to me too. You put it in a dehydrator. So it kind of gives you the feeling of you're having a nice, warm, cooked meal, but right. you know, it's still keeping the enzymes intact because it never goes 115 degrees. So that's that's what this whole thing is about, keeping the enzymes intact. Enzymes right? intact, um, and yeah, and just having a lot of chlorophyll in your diet. So you the know, integrity of the food. The integrity of the food, and just they, they refer to a lot of things as living or live. So that's what it's all about, keeping the enzymes intact and keeping the food as fresh as possible. Next, the zucchini noodles come out of the dehydrator and the sauce gets massaged into them so that it's evenly coated. Make sure they get a good bit of nice everything. Nice healthy portion too. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. A lot of people think, you know, you come here to eat and you don't get full, but you really, you really do. He tops the dish with pine nut parmesan. It has pine nuts, white miso, and spices in it. That's the zucchini pesto pasta. Our most popular dishes are the ones that have been here the longest. So that includes our pad thai, the zucchini pesto pasta, the sunlight burger, and as a cooked option, the macro burger sells really well. And all of that's made fresh and in-house. So it probably has stuck around for so long because it is so unusual mm -hmm. that you can't find that kind of cuisine anywhere. Um, the, the pad thai is made from kelp noodles and the first question people ask is, does it taste like seaweed, does it have like a sea flavor to it? Absolutely not. We wash, we rinse, we make sure to kind of get that, that flavor, that smell out of it. And so the flavors then are absorbed by everything else that we add to it and it pops. So besides the zucchini pasta, they got some other killer dishes here too. This is the Sunlight Burger, which is not cooked, raw. It's pretty tasty. <laughs> Here's the Pad Thai Julie was talking about. And this is the Micro Burger, and of course you've got a banana split for dessert. Check them out at the Present Moment Cafe. Julie was one of the first people I met here in Jacksonville. She is the founder of Girls Gone Green, and I think I met her one year when I was participating in the No Meat March. I have a lot of friends who are vegan or vegetarian, and it seems to me that they are always on the hunt for cool restaurants and new dishes. Next, we're going to visit a food truck that serves up really tasty food, popular with both meat eaters and vegans. Here at I Know Jacks, we do our best to support local businesses in the community. Visit our website to find out how we can help promote your business on iknowjacks.com. Call Joe directly at 904-345-0755 or visit iknowjacks.com slash advertising. 
Next, we're going to Hemming Park to check in with a Fusion food truck, one of the most popular food trucks here in Jacksonville. So you're okay. making drunken noodles? Yeah, this is drunken noodles. And Got some garlic going in right now. And being Italian, I like the garlic. And I love Woo, the fire. Watch Woo, that. Baby. We got some tomatoes, onions, bell peppers, little fresh Thai basil going in. We're gonna saute that. Heck a couple yeah. of minutes. And you say this is a traditional dish. Yes. And it's our most popular dish. Well, it says it has drunken in the name. Right? Of course, it's going to be popular. Yeah, no alcohol. No, no alcohol. I don't know. We, we can't. We won't count <laughs> that against you right now. No. <laughs> but yeah, it's our most popular dish. It's the first dish that's going to sell out. Not the banana know. curry, because I know that's your. That's like, our award-winning dish. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's always. That's this what. In our sauce, we had a little bit of the turmeric right, right here. We've got garam masala, which I grind every week. The what is spices. that exactly? It's got 30 different spices in it. Oh my goodness. So you're like a mad clothes. scientist oh. putting all that. Right. <laughs> hey, you know what? My mom taught me. Or a so. drug dealer. I'm not really sure <laughs> which. <laughs> no. I don't have it. No, I need it behind you. Okay. I got it in right now. <laughs> See, my husband giving me orders. I'm like, what? I never dare do that to my wife. <laughs> That's how he got that finger injury, right? Yeah. I tell him, I tell him, I tell him. That's it. I had a restaurant with my brother for like 22 years, back in San Diego. Got 22 years, just a little you know, yes. starter business to hey, get you going. Hey, we had five restaurants back then. All going crazy, yeah. you know? No life at that point. No life, right. 16 hours a day. Right. And then I got married to my hubby, D. Hey, D. <laughs> Are we you, are you number one? I am today. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked at a couple of corporate places. Not so totally much. hated it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is not my forte. Like, I'm on the phone for eight hours. Uh, I text. I'm not on a phone. Were you in one of those little gopher warring things where you, yeah, the little cubicle? <laughs> exactly. Cubicles? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then he came home one day. He's like, look what, you, look what I got for you. And there he was a. Truck. Okay. I'm like, so it oh wasn't like God. a big food truck with a giant bow on it in the, in the no, driveway. No, no, no. This was on Christmas. We're not making a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys been doing this truck for how long? It's gonna be two years next week. Two years next week. Next Happy week. birthday. Thank you. How many, what's, the, how many, what's the most you've done in a food truck? Now? In a food truck, I would say 300. Wow. Yeah. Close that to for a, for a restaurant, that would be a big. That, that's a big yeah, night I for mean, a, we, for we a restaurant. Yeah, we 300 in a restaurant, but you got an army. Right. Here, just three of this us. This is an army. It's just an army of three. Three. Right. <laughs> so. Sort of like when we do the show, we have an army. Right. It's an army of just two three. or three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you're not cooking on the truck, yeah. what do you like to cook at home? At home, I like to cook... Like, what's your what? favorite weird dish to cook? Weird dish? Well, oh. for you weird. I mean, all this is weird to me. Right. I like shepherd's pie. Okay. Shepherd's pie. Um, chicken pot pie. That's the imperial British part because, coming out, I think. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, we grew up in England, so Gotta every have... now and then. We'll make some you got rid of the stuff. accent really well. No, I still got it. I just yeah, don't you use just, it. You, as just much. Hide, you hide it well. I just, I just use it when I want to impress the guys. Yeah. It's Friday! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love going to Hemming Park for lunch. I was there recently and had a fantastic lunch from Balu. I just love the fact that you can sit outside in the middle of downtown Jacksonville enjoying your lunch. They rotate food trucks in the park, but every weekday from 11 to 2, you can go out there and find a food truck for lunch. A couple of weeks ago, I did a story from the Happy Grilled Cheese, another of the popular food trucks. They've opened a brick and mortar place right next to Hemming Park. So if you missed that story, you can find it on my website at iknowjax.com. Celebrate the Jacksonville Farmer's Market at Moon Over the Market on November 9th at 6 p.m. Under sparkling lights with live music, unlimited cocktails from Island Oasis, beer from Engine 15, 
tastes of local food and a student culinary competition too. Brought to you by Gastro Jacks and the Northeast Florida chapter of the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. This week, I'm really excited to introduce a new addition to our small I Know Jacks team, and I can't wait to introduce her. But that's coming up right after this. Every week, I try to help you find fun things to do in Jacksonville. And from now on, I have recruited some help to make sure that this goes awesome. So over to you, Trace. Welcome to the TDC Experience. I am Tracy.com, your official phonologist. We're here at the Jacksonville Landing on the beautiful St. John's River, bringing you the latest in entertainment news. First up this week, the Avondale Art Walk. Thursday night, five to nine, rain or shine. It's the second Thursday of every month in this fun area of Jacksonville that, quite honestly, I don't frequent too much, but it gives us all a reason to visit no matter where you live in town. I love all the great restaurants and fun shops, including Gotta Have It. It's my favorite place to go for girly, girly gifts. All the info is at avondelleartwalk.com. Also Thursday night, she is fierce. If you're a woman and consider yourself fierce, this is a great networking event for you. Led by the fiercest of them all, First Coast Connect producer and host, Melissa Ross, and featuring JAG's VP, Chief Legal Counsel, Mega Parekh. And register to win a makeup and headshot portrait from my personal favorite photographer to the stars, Renee Parento. Get tickets at 904ticks.com. And speaking of Renee Parento, she will be having a grand reopening of her studio this week. We wish her all the best and highly recommend getting booked for your own personal photo shoot. And Saturday, attention writers and readers. Jacks by Jacks Literary Arts Fest is celebrating the written word. 14 Riverside businesses are opening up their doors and rolling out the red carpet for two authors at each location, plus a student showcase and an after party. A few of my favorites, that includes former Times Union colleague Abel Harding, author of Blue, a story of a father and a son, and Lynn Skapyak Harlan. She will be reading her Lady Trucker birthday poems. I'm currently working on my memoir with Lynn. More on that later. For now, a full lineup and locations are at fscj.edu slash jacksbyjacks. And finally, as a veteran myself, it is my duty to remind you Thursday is Veterans Day. Join me right here back at the landing or anywhere along the route, starting at Everbank Field, for the Veterans Day Parade at 11 a.m. Come show your spirit and support for those who serve. For even more live entertainment reports, follow my TDC Experience videos on the I Know Jacks Facebook page. And remember, if you're bored in Jacksonville, it's your own fault. Those look like awesome events, but the one place that you're definitely going to find me is this awesome little event called the Moon Over the Market. They've got lots of great tastings and the tickets are very reasonably priced at 35 bucks. Check this out. Here at I Know Jacks, we focus on the fun side of Jacksonville. I don't do news stories and I don't analyze the current state of the local economy. <laughs> I leave all that stuff to the real news organizations and focus on the small, everyday, super important stuff like finding cool local adventures. <laughs> Jacksonville is the perfect city for me. It's not too big and it's not too small, it's just right. There's always a lot going on, and I try my best to give you ideas for fun things to do when you go out with friends and family. I know the holidays are right around the corner, so many of you will have family coming to town, and I'm working on a story about what to do with family for the holidays, so let me know what you usually do. Where do you take visitors when they're here in town? What do you think they should see? What do you want to make sure that they get to experience? What's special? Send me all your ideas and suggestions to joe at iknowjacks.com and maybe I'll use your ideas in my upcoming story. And by the way, don't forget to check out my post, Fun Things to Do in November for ideas about what to do right now. <laughs> Let's give our brains a little workout with this week's trivia question. Hi, it's Italia with Trivia Nation and it's time to get your think on. The year that Roger Maris hit 61 home runs, how many did Mickey Mantle hit? 
Beaver Street Commissary is 20,000 square feet of shared space for caterers and food truck owners with two full kitchens, three walk-in coolers, two freezers, and plenty of dry storage. If you need a licensed kitchen, visit BeaverStreetCommissary.com for more information. I just wanted to let you know that I'm now sending out The Insider every Tuesday. You'll get tips and ideas for cool things to do, plus you'll find out what I'm up to and where we're filming next, that kind of stuff. You can subscribe to The Insider on my website at iknowjax.com. Hi, it's Italia with Trivia Nation, and it's time to get your think on. We asked the year that Roger Maris hit 61 home runs, how many did Mickey Mantle hit? 54 is the answer, coincidentally in 1961. Please join us at any of our 50 locations in Northeast Florida. Just go to TriviaNation.com for more details. Did you get it? I'm really not good at some trivia. Usually obscure topics like 80s movies and NASA or internet history, but I don't do well with sports or fashion or TV trivia at all. <laughs> but I do love going out to live trivia with a group of people. Now obviously I need a group of people to fill in for, well, my lack of knowledge. The Flying Fortress, the B-17, has become an icon of American power. The crew members who flew the bombers during World War II were real heroes. They were flying these airplanes over enemy territory for you know, eight, ten-hour missions in uh, very hazardous conditions, everything from the freezing weather to the flak and, and fighters. And uh, I mean, they were just brave guys. And then this Memphis Bell airplane kind of highlights the fact that uh, not many people ever made it 25 missions. And uh, this was one of the first airplanes, or this uh, is a replica of the Memphis Bell that was one of the first to make 25 missions. The way they planned the mission was they would decide how far they needed to go to what city they, had, they were going to. They'd figure out how much fuel they had to carry for that. And then they would figure how many bombs they could carry and still have enough fuel to get back and forth. Then they would figure out how many airplanes they needed to, to take out there to deliver the amount of tonnage of bombs they wanted to drop. There's not much space inside the Flying Fortress for the crew, which usually consisted of 10 to 13 people. The nose of the airplane is what housed the Norden bomb site, and actually just very few airplanes would contain that Norden bomb site. Just the lead airplanes on a bombing run would have that, and, and the other airplanes would drop their bombs, they call them toggleers, on the lead airplanes uh, dropping of their bombs. And then just aft of him, uh, you'll notice on some airplanes they have the Astrodome there, but that was where the navigator would sit and it was his job to plot their course and get them very close to where they needed to be. Then the bombardier would take over and, and do the bombing run over where they were trying to, to hit. Uh, and then now you go upstairs into the cockpit and that's where the pilot, co-pilot, and they had a top turret operator. He was also called the engineer. And then as you go back, you had went through the bomb bay. Then the radio room was just after that. The one radio operator sat there, and then farther back you had the two waste gunners, the ball turret guy. The, the That was the one place I don't think anybody wanted to be, but it turned out after the war they tallied it up, and that was really the safest place people were, because you were in a small confined area and you had a lot of bulletproof uh, armor around you. So as, as uh, unpopular as it was to be picked as a ball turret guy, it turned out to be the safest. And, uh, and then we said the waste gunners, and then in the very back you had the tail gunner. And that position was determined to be the most dangerous. Once you lost your tail gunner, you were probably going down. You can almost imagine what it must have been like. The smell of the fuel, the noise of the gunfire, not really knowing what's going on around you. One guy was telling us how he was one of the first crew members to get an electric suit because they were so cold up there. They were, they were having to be able to go higher and higher and they needed these electric suits. He was in the ball turret and he's all you know, squashed in there. It's a very tight area. He's in the ball turret. He gets so cold he turns on his suit and it shorts out and starts electrocuting him. So he pulls up his shirt and he's got this huge scar on the side of him where he uh, got fried with the, the, the electric suit. 
Thanks for staying with me all the way to the very end. I'll be back again next Sunday at 6.30 p.m. But if you can't watch me then, you can always find the latest episode on my website at iknowjax.com. That's it for this week's episode. I'll be back next Sunday. But before then, I'll see you on the internet. <laughs>